Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, Star Wars Now, and as usual, this is my Bad Batch episode 14 review. So, um, first of all, spoiler, because I am uh, as normal diving into the spoilers of this episode, because what kind of Easter egg review doesn't have spoilers in it? And, um, I know this is a bit close to my other, uh, my other Bad Batch episode that I released, which was two days ago as of filming this. I really said uh, that episode two two uh, days ago, but um, the reason why I'm doing it so close is because I didn't have Wi-Fi last week, so uh, I couldn't release it. I didn't have Wi-Fi Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, so I had to release it on uh, Thursday. So I know it's a bit tight, but I mean, I'm trying to release them as quick as possible. So I know this one's a bit close, but I ch I'll try to space it out a bit, and hopefully I'll be able to re release this one as soon as possible. So uh, let's get right to it. So the bad. So this episode is titled War Mantle, which in this episode you really get to see the transition from the Republic to the Empire because last episode, well technically it was two episodes ago, um, we still saw that they were still using the Republic's tech, tech. Like obviously they're they're the Empire now, but they're still they're still using the gunships, they're still using clone troopers, they're still using the new class attack shuttles that we've been that we saw throughout the Clone Wars. So this is when you really get to see the jump between. It's it's a bit sudden of a jump. So, um, let me go into it right now. So, um, the episode opens up on this mysterious planet, which we later learn is Daro. Now, Daro, it, um, it reminds me a lot of the planet Morak from the Mandalorian Season 2. It was that planet in, uh, I believe it was Chapter uh, 15, The Believer. That was one with Migs Mayfield, played by Bill Burr. So, that reminded me a lot of Morak because it's a nice forested planet, and I, these planets are very good. It's kind of like, um, I like these planets a lot. They're kind of like Endor, except this one has mountain reaches on it. It. So I, I really think this has a very good resemblance to Morak. In fact, I even thought it was Morak. So um, now you see that there are a couple of Massifs, which are those things that the Tusken Raiders had, had as pets when Anakin slayed them. And he, and he delivers the line, and not just the men, but the women and the children. I killed them. I killed them all. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men, but the women and the children, too. So those are those massives that you see. So these massives and a couple other clones are chasing this one clone. Now, at first, I thought this was Hauser from uh, back in uh, three, two episodes ago. But it turns out, no, this is Gregor, which I'm sure if you remember, Gregor is that clone commando, which you see in the episode, The Void of the Clone Wars. And he's also the one that you see in Star Wars Rebels. Now we don't fully we don't fully get explained on how he survives, but um, I'll go into a bit more about what we know about him later. And it might have something to do with the retcon that they're doing. They slightly retconned uh, how he survived or something. I don't really know. So um, cl the clone puts a homing beacon on a tree, which you're probably seeing on the screen right now. It didn't really look like any homing beacons I've ever seen. I guess I mean it's kind of like the homing beacon that Obi Wan put on the ship in Attack of Clones, but it doesn't really look the same. But I guess. It's the same same type of homing beacon. So, um, then back on the Bad Batch, Omega is working on that gong droid that we saw a couple episodes ago, which Hunter called defective, but I think Hunter should take that back because later in the episode, that gong droid saves them. So the Bad Batch pick up a call from Rex. Now, obviously, we saw Rex in that episode, uh, a couple episodes ago, what was it? Um, Battle Scars. We saw Rex in the episode Battle Scars. So, um, Rex then tells them about the clone number CC557639. So that's Gregor's uh, clone number. Now, I don't know if that's the same clone number that they called him in the Clone Wars because I didn't actually look that up. I just read that on Wikipedia. So I don't know if that really is the right uh, number. I'm assuming that it's the same number, but sometimes we make a slight mistake and they just make up a new number by accident. So um, Rex says that he wants them to do a favor for him because he's a bit tied up right now and go to the planet Daro to rescue CC557639, a.k.a. Gregor. So at first, everybody is a bit like, eh, should we really do it? Because, you know, they just mentioned that they're in the middle of Sid's job. So that kind of answers my question from last episode. Will Sid still be working in her business? Well, yes. I'm guessing that she reclaimed her office on Ord Mantell. But I think we're done with seeing Ord Mantell. Like I said in the other episode, it's a bit boring when you when you see Ord Mantell all the time. So I'm guessing that we're done with Ord Mantell. But, I mean, it's nice to know that we're still getting mentioned to Sid and we still know what happened if she's still in her business. So um, all of them are not really, all of them don't really want to do that, but because 
um, because uh, Echo, he's he he's friends with Rex, so he decides that yeah, we're gonna do it because he trusts Rex the most. I I'm guessing that he trusts he trusts Rex the most out of all of them. And he even mentions later in the episode that um that uh Hunter saved uh him, so he has to save another clone. So he kind of feels that he knows what that clone's probably going through right now because he was captured for so long and he knows how it felt. Obviously, Gregor's not going through the same torture that he went through, but he still feels for him he knows what he's doing so um obviously omega as always i mean hunter always agrees with omega it's like omega is just like oh should we uh should we jump off a cliff omega says uh yes we should jump off the cliff hunter's like oh yep let's do it so omega just uh, omega basically decides for the team that they're going there and then hunter agrees so they head to ha- that planet, and when they land, uh, Hunter tells Ome- uh, Hunter tells Omega and Wrecker to stay on the ship. And it feels like we're going two steps back because they can't always keep Omega on the ship. But I mean, it was for a reason this episode, and actually it pays off because later you get to see Omega sp- Omega fly, which is very good. So Hunter, his uh, his um, improved abilities allow him to track the clone trooper, and then they find the homing beacon, and they allow him to track the clone trooper. And then him, Echo Tech, uh, and uh, yeah, him, Echo Tech. They go up the they go up the mountain, and then they then find a huge imper- uh, imperial base. Yeah, a huge imperial base. So it seems that th- they said at the beginning that this uh, that this planet was supposed to be deserted. But uh, apparently it's a military base. Now, they don't specify this was a military base that was around during the Clone Wars. I think it was around during the Clone Wars because Gregor Gregor mentioned something about training there, uh, training other clone commandos there. So I'm guessing that this was still around during um, the Clone Wars and it's not a new thing. But they were never aware of it. So we don't even know if the rest of the Republic was aware of it. Maybe it was a secret organization that Palpatine put up and he didn't tell anybody else about it. No. (laughs) So um, then it cuts to uh, back on the Empire on Camino. So um, now the Empire is leaving Camino, and they've terminated the contracts with the Kaminoans. So this is kind of, this is a very sudden jump. So they've terminated the contracts, and now they're doing all um, now they're doing all clones that have to sign up, uh, all humans that have to sign up to be a stormtrooper. Now at first we'd be like, who wants to sign up for a stormtrooper? But we already figured that out in Solo. It seems that a lot of people want to sign up to be stormtroopers, but they don't really know what they're in for so um now that they've terminated the contract you can see that everybody all the the empire is leaving and also you can see some of the clone cadets so it seems that they were still training clone cadets uh to be soldiers and one of them asks are we still going to be soldiers right and uh one of the cam no says yeah you're still going to be soldiers we're just moving to a different location so maybe they're not telling those poor kids the truth about how they're not going to be soldiers but they mentioned later that they're going to try to find somebody else who can help them going back to my uh star killer theory from the uh, from my other video crazy omega theories if you want you can go check that one out click the card in the top right corner so um then you then cut to Lama Lama Su and Nala Se. Their names are very similar. Lama Su and Nala Se. I'm surprised I actually still remember them. But now they're talking about how um they're still going to try to continue their operation. And they're going to try to find somebody else because the imp it, because their clone thing like they mentioned their clone uh, operation is known throughout the galaxy. So they're sure that somebody else is going to want to uh there is going to want to sign them up. Maybe they'll do a fifty percent discount. Fifty percent discount. <laughs> So um, then it, I'm just going to cut back to the Bad Batch. So once when the Bad Batch are there, you then see a new class attack shuttle, which you see in some other episodes and throughout the Clone Wars, like I mentioned in some of my other videos. And it's landing. Now, first when I saw that, I couldn't tell what that ship was because it's a new class attack shuttle, but they removed all the red painting. And now it's just a gray shuttle, which looks a lot like the Sentinel class shuttles from Rebels and the Lamba from uh, Return of the Jedi, which is when we first got to see it. So look, you see that even their ships are changing. They they haven't uh, they haven't made the Sentinels and Lambas yet, but I'm guessing we're going to see that in Bad Batch Season 2, hopefully. And then you see... Uh, one of the one a uh, clone trooper walk out, and that is a um com- uh, that is a clone co- uh, commando trooper. Now the clone commando troopers, uh, or you can call them Republic commandos. Those Republic commandos, they're basically kind of elite. Uh, they're basically kind of elite clone troopers, kind of like what uh, Crosshair is, but um, they're basically the Republic's version of that. 
Now, um, I, there was a Clone Commando video game. I've never played that before, but I'm sure if you guys have played that, you would instantly recognize them um, as Clone Commandos. Now, Gregor is one of those Clone Commandos that I was talking about earlier. Greg, Gregor is a Clone Commando. So, it seems that Gregor must have been training some new Clone Commandos then uh, or something like that. I'm going to go a bit more about Gregor later. Then you see a bunch of Stormtroopers walk out. Now, the Stormtroopers, they look like they're kind of like Clone Troopers, but they're kind of like stormtroopers put together, and their their helmet actually has a very uh, actually has a resemblance to the survival on Celest mission in the original Battlefront twenty fifteen. There was a survival on Celest mission, and in that mission they had magma troopers, and the, their masks had a very good resemblance to the stormtroopers that we saw in this episode. So it seems that they haven't fully made the uh, stormtroopers yet with the bad aim, but I will go into they actually have their E eleven blasters from A New Hope. The E eleven is the blaster that they use in a new Ho that all stormtroopers use throughout the original trilogy so they even have the blasters the same as in uh, a new hope and the rest of them so um it seems that they're not fully transitioned into the empire but um they seems that they've that they've started so they haven't perfectly perfected the mold obviously they look a bit weird in those outfits but that's what they're going to do for now so like i said about the republic commando it seems that republic commandos are mostly clone troopers that are kind of ruling around this base so i get that's what you see throughout most of this episode and they're pretty hard to actually uh they're pretty hard to actually take down so then uh tech uh on his data pad he calls an elevator up and they go down now this reminds me a lot of fallen order because this entire area looks a lot like kind of like the uh dig site in fallen order which is right before the second tomb in fallen order if you ever played the game um this reminds me a lot the elevators like when you when you go to fight uh second sister it just reminds me a lot of uh fallen order now in hunter's mask you you can see when he's doing a close-up when he's zooming in and looking at uh, the clone troopers you can read the numbers three seven five four hundred so that's just uh that's just some small orbesh so it says three seven five four hundred but it's orbesh numbers are pretty much the same as english numbers so if you know your normal numbers then you can figure it out pretty easy there was some uh, there were some uh, letters on a uh, text data pad, but it was too small for me to read, so I don't know what they said. They were too small and they were at an angle, so I couldn't read what was on text data pad. But then um, later in the episode, there's some orbesh that on the elevator that says floor. That's the only orbesh that I can translate in this entire uh, episode. It was just some uh, orbesh on the elevator, and that read floor, F-L-O-O-R, pretty much as normal. So then Hunter and them find Gregor, and they rescue him out of the uh, cell. And they say, they ask, are you CC, whatever his number was? And he's like, depends depends on who he's saying. Then they tell them that Rex sent them. So it seems that maybe in the next episode, we're going to get to see Gregor meet up with Rex. And then maybe we're going to get to see Wolfie. And I'm going to talk a bit more, like, let me talk about Gregor right now. So it seems that they talk about, Gregor does mention that um, he did survive an explosion once. So he did make a mention to that episode, but we still don't know how he got there. So he mentions that he was training there. So here's what, here's what my assumption is. He trained there and he trained a bunch of clone commandos until uh, he crash landed on whatever his backstory was. I don't fully remember it. And then he got landed on the void where we then get to see R2 and the rest of the and colonel, whatever. And then they meet him and then we got to see that episode in the Clone Wars. Then um, after that, he he survived the blast. And then he was kind of an outlaw throughout the he was kind of an outlaw throughout the galaxy until he eventually arrived here, and then we get to see. So I'm assuming that this took place after his explosion, and he he's just been wandering around the galaxy for now, you know, just doing what the Bad Batch is doing after Order sixty six. And I'm guessing that he didn't initiate it because he had some brain he had some brain damage when he in the explosion. That's why he was a bit crazy in Rebels. Don't mean to be rude, Gregor, but he was a bit um outlandish and he kind of was a bit reckless in Rebels, but that's just because he had some partial brain damage. So you then see Omega is worried about Hunter and them uh, when on the ship and Wrecker's just relaxing and and um, uh, she's just like, how can you be relaxing on this? And he's like, oh, I just need to get ready because <laughs> uh, Hunter said to get ready in case of anything. So it seems that Wrecker's just relaxing. Well, Omega's a bit worried, but she's right to be worried because it's going to end up bad at the end of the episode, Omega. She's using the Force. 
So then they end up in a room where it, that has a very striking resemblance to the Death Star control room from New Hope. It's a small control room. It kind of looks like the one that was in the Star Wars, I believe it was Dark Forces video game. I've only played it on the website KBH Games, but it has a striking resemblance to the one on the Death Star. So then um, Tech uh, goes on his data pad and he goes and he mentions that they're going to try to escape through the ventilation system. And right before that, they just had a bit of a skirmish throughout the hallways and in the elevator, but that wasn't that much, so I decided not to talk about it. So they decide that they're going to take, they're going to go through the ventilation systems and they're going to get to the thermal exhaust port. Now, I'm sure for some of you that sounds familiar because the thermal exhaust port is the thing that Luke uh, needs to send his proton torpedoes in to blow up the Death Star. So they're escaping through the thermal exhaust port of the of that base so i'm guessing that it's not just battle stations that have thermal exhaust ports i'm guessing a bunch of stuff it's kind of like the exhaust pipe on a car i'm guessing kind of like the or those big things on top of factories that uh, bring out the exhaust also um it, just a note the thermal oscillator was a thing from the um from the force awakens which they used to destroy the star killer base but that had a different function the thermal oscillator was supposed to um keep the energy in so the planet didn't explode itself and then that's why when they destroyed it, it it exploded but that's that's a different video so um uh then so then they're escaping through the ventilation system and hunter calls uh hunter calls omega to go rescue them and omega is actually driving so it seems that after uh hair is great driving in uh in the episode uh what was it three episodes ago uh no two episodes ago uh, when they went to go rescue uh, Cham and uh, uh, Eleni, it seems that she might have given Omega a couple uh, tips on how to uh, fly a ship. So it seems that they let her fly and she actually knows how to do it. She did say that um, Tech wasn't going to let her uh, fly until she could recite all the uh, all the things that they were talking about, whatever, like the safety manual or whatever. So maybe she either learned that or maybe after, because she's being so good at the missions, maybe they just let her fly to give her a free pass. So um, then... Then when she uh then when she gets in to bring everybody now they're getting chased again by some more republic commandos and some more half stormtroopers half clone trooper i'm just gonna call them stormtroopers so um everybody is on but hunter so now they're flying and they're getting chased by those new class attack shuttles and um uh, so yeah they're getting chased by uh, new class attack shuttles and some v-wings so the v-wings were only seen for a couple seconds of revenge of the sith and we see them in the bad match trailer now i'm actually very surprised that the clone troopers actually have pretty good aim. They're not as bad as stormtroopers, but uh, maybe that progressives. I didn't see any any like they didn't look like like they had terrible aim, but nobody got shot, so they didn't have great aim. So I guess they're kind of in between right now. Like I keep saying, they're in between. So no bad aim, no uh, no uh, no too precise uh, for Tuscan Raiders because Obi Wan is wrong in New Hope when he says way too precise because they have terrible aim. So then uh, Hunter really Hunter really wants them to jump out. And right when they lose power, Omega has an idea to attach the gonk droid to the ship. Now that makes a lot of sense because j gonk droids, aka GNK power droids. So she plugs in the gonk droid to the ship. And Hunter, you were very wrong because Hunter called that droid defected. And if they just, if they, if Omega had given up, then they probably would have died there. So great job, Omega there. So, but then eventually the gonk droid doesn't work. So now Hunter really wants wants them to jump to hyperspace and then he orders tech and echo now they clearly don't want to jump because they don't want to abandon hunter but that's an order and omega does really doesn't want it but uh but hunter just wants to keep her safe so then they jump into hyperspace and hunter gets captured by the empire so um, then it cuts back to Topka City, where um, then we see Rampart for the only, he only appears for like 30 seconds throughout this entire episode. So we then see Rampart, who then is disappointed in Lama Sue because they then because the Empire caught uh, Nala Se in the uh, in in the lab doing something. So I don't know why that's against their agreement, but then um, I'm guessing that they kill Lama Sue because they then close the door and you see a couple clone troopers with their guns up. But Lama Su. So I guess that's the death of Lama Su, which is actually very important because now the now the only person that they have is Nala Se, and it seems that the Empire needs Nala Se because Rampart says that we have no need for a politician; we need a scientist. So, like I said earlier, this is going back to my Star Killer theory for my Crazy Omega Theories video. I'm I think that there I think that um, Rampart's got something evil planned. Maybe the Empire. This might not have something to do with the Baby Yoda in the Mandalorian season two 
to. It might, but I'm guessing this is something totally different. So the Empire needs a scientist for some reason. It could just be to continue. Maybe they want to make more of Crosshair because Crosshair is the only clone that uh, that, the, that the Empire really trusts right now. And Rampart doesn't really trust uh, um, him that really much because he's failed all the time. He hasn't gotten the Bad Batch once. But this episode, it seems that we're going to see, maybe in the next episode, a bit of bonding between um, uh, Crosshair and Hunter, but we don't know. So then, at the end of the episode, we cut back, and um, uh, uh, you see uh, Crosshair walks right up in front of the race shield with Hunter in it, and he says he was hoping for the team, but Hunter will do. So what evil does he have? Maybe, 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 they're going to try to turn the, um, they're going to try to turn Hunter's inhibitor chip on, because they did mention a couple episodes ago that, um, uh, they do want to, they, they mentioned that there was only one clone that they were able to have the inhibitor chip on, and, he, and, um, now, and Lamasu says, I wish there were more. So, I'm guessing that they're going to try to turn Hunter's inhibitor chip on, and the last two episodes are going to try to be, um, uh, is going to try to be, that maybe they're going to face off against Hunter, and then in the finale, Omega is going to reveal herself to be force sensitive and save Hunter from the inhibitor chip. And maybe Crosshair will die, or maybe he'll come back to the light. But I think he's honestly beyond saving. A lot of people think that he's beyond saving, and I'm kind of with them. He's done terrible things so far, so I think he's kind of beyond saving. But I mean, that's all the Easter eggs that were in this episode. It was a pretty Easter egg filled episode with a lot of references to New Hope with the thermal exhaust port and stuff like that. But um, that's all of them, I guess. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And we got two more episodes left of The Bad Batch. I don't know what they're called, but I will definitely be doing Easter eggs review uh, on them. And bye. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Rawr!